So in this uh, phase two study of bromodamstat in combination with uh, ruxolitinib in patients with myelofibrosis, it's an um, open label phase two study uh, evaluating patients in two cohorts. There were two cohorts of patients. In the first cohort of patients were patients who were refractory or resistant to ruxolitinib. And bromodamstat was added as an add-on therapy on top of a stable dose of ruxolitinib. In the other cohort, these were patients who were treatment naive, nearly diagnosed patients who were treated with roxolitinib at 10 milligrams twice a day in combination with bomadamstat. So the uh, primary uh, outcome of this study was the safety. The sec key secondary endpoints of this study was the spleen length reduction, or the spleen volume reduction at 24 weeks, as well as the this total symptom score reduction of more than 50% at 24 weeks as measured by the myelofibrosis symptom assessment form. Other key, other exploratory endpoints included molecular responses to these uh, regimen. So the medium follow-up was uh, 26 weeks for this particular study. And after this median follow-up, we actually achieved uh, remarkable responses uh, most of our patients, more than 50% of the patients, will achieve uh, symptom responses and also spleen length responses, as uh, previously alluded to, at 24 weeks. And it was also well tolerated. The commonest uh, uh, hematologic toxicity was thrombocytopenia that was reversible upon dose uh, modification. The commonest non-hematologic toxicity was dyscusia as well as joint pain, occurring in less than 20% of these patients, mostly grade one to two. And they did not require any uh, dosage uh, interruption or treatment uh, discontinuation. And we also observed that more than 30% of our patients actually achieved a uh, reduction in the JAK2 allu burden or the keraticlin allu burdens throughout the treatment. So these were uh, key findings of this particular study and a phase three study in the front line or in a second line setting is warranted. Thank you.